So we're talking about August 2021. We're going to be talking about Mars, the Sun, Mercury transits, Venus transits, a lot going on. Go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel if you like things um, such as this, and make sure to share it with others as well. So let's get into it. First of all, um, Mars is going to be in Leo for the whole month. Now, I talked about this before. Mars has recently been in signs where it's not so powerful. In fact, not since it was in Aries back in the beginning of the year has Mars been feeling really powerful and ready to fight our battles with confidence. So now, Mars being in Leo for the whole month, we're ready to fight, and it might not be pretty. So we have to keep that in mind, stay disciplined, and make sure to fight the good fight, meaning fight for things that are really worth fighting for, not just things that make you feel strong or tough or win some battle that isn't even worth fighting over in the first place. Again, Mars and Leo is like the general is fighting for the righteous cause. So keep that righteousness in mind. Venus is actually not too far away from Mars, especially at the beginning of the month. Um, so Venus and Mars can bring some contentiousness in your relationships, especially through the first part of August. But Again, that starts to wane as we get further into August. Saturn is going to be opposite the Sun for the first part of um, August. And in fact, the Sun is in Cancer um, until August 16th. So the Sun in Cancer opposite Saturn for the first part of August means that our confidence, you know, will be feeling a little less um, fired up on some level. Um, inherently, so that'll bring some sensitivity, especially to that Mars and Leo, because the Sun is in Cancer and it's opposite Saturn. Now, again, this can be very humbling, can also be kind of, um, you know, a sort of lack of confidence, so to speak. So we need to be careful um, of that, but the Sun in Cancer really brings a quality of family, of connection, of really connecting to the heart and empowering that heart space. But again, it's opposite Saturn. When Saturn is opposite the Sun, you know, it can bring some stress and fear and worry, even some hidden guilt and shame and things like that. Notice these things, and especially notice where you might have some guilt and shame and worry about how you've treated family or people that, have, that you love. And, you know, where, you know, there's a saying, we always hurt the ones we love. You might start to feel the pain of that, especially um, from the beginning of August till around the middle of August as it's going through cancer. But then um, the sun goes into Leo around mid-month, especially um, August 16th. The sun goes into Leo, and it's going to be opposite Jupiter. It's going to be a big shift in the middle of August, because now we'll have both the sun and Mars in Leo from August 16th until the end. And Mars also starts to become combust at this time. So again, um, middle of August to the beginning of September, there could be quite a bit of furious um, fighting going on. Be careful. Make sure, again, to fight for the righteous cause. And that could certainly be revealed, especially um, around the middle of August, because as soon as the sun goes into Leo, it's going to be um, uh, opposite Jupiter in Aquarius. So the sun-Jupiter opposition. Jupiter will be very bright in the sky, for one thing. Look up and notice that um, in the middle of August. But it really pulls us in the direction of wanting to find teachings and inspirations that really serve the kingdom, that really serve our world, rather than just serve ourself. So again, even though both the Sun and Mars will be in Leo, Mars will then be also combust and getting more and more burnt up by the Sun, so there could be some frustration. Jupiter aspecting from Aquarius can really tend to align us with higher principles, with our teachings, you know, so that we don't forget our teachings and just kind of lash out. So this is going to be an ongoing theme throughout August. Mars and Leo, the Sun, especially in the middle of August, joining Mars and Leo and then getting closer to it, which makes it more combustible. So watch your frustrations and anger and irritations. Now we also have Mercury and Venus. We'll start with Mercury. Mercury's moving really fast in August. It actually starts in Cancer, and it's in Cancer until August 9th. And then it flies through Leo, um, and it's there until the 26th. So it's only 17 days in Leo. Um, so from the 1st until the 9th, Mercury and Cancer were thinking and feeling intuitively and, tr and translating our feelings and emotions, maybe some of that sort of guilt, shame, fear, worry that I was talking about earlier with the Sun um, in Cancer opposite Saturn. 
Mercury will be there interpreting it and trying to really give voice to it. So it could be a really good time, again, to make peace with those who maybe you've argued with or where you feel kind of bad because Saturn is also opposite that Mercury and Cancer as well. Saturn's very powerful in Capricorn. So from the 1st until the 9th, again, Mercury and Cancer opposite Saturn brings a sort of reckoning and a, and a potential to really make some peace and to understand some things, especially the implications and ramifications of your communication style, particularly with your family or things like that. But then Mercury goes into Leo um, from the 9th until the 26th. So now Mercury and Leo, again, he'll be joined Mars. The sun is coming soon behind Mercury and Leo. Now our words and our ideas are much more cutting, much more clear and forceful. So again, we always need to be careful not to be overly forceful and not to use words as weapons, especially when Mars joins Mercury, words as weapons. It's kind of a, a sort of easy way to look at the difficult quality, but instead we can use ideas and concepts to really, you know, see, you know take the weapons against ourselves and our own ego. I don't mean against ourselves, beat ourselves up, but I mean see through all of our wrong ideas. Because ultimately everything in the world is just you know, a kind of play of morality and things that aren't so important, um, ultimately. I don't mean authentic morality, but we get all pumped up and fired up about something. Ultimately, we need to be mature, we need to be calm. And by the way, that issue of morality and finding a higher purpose will be important as well as Mercury goes into Leo, because it's going to be opposite Jupiter as well, because Jupiter is still in Aquarius. It'll be aspecting Mercury also. So when we remember our teachings, our ideas and our mind and our language can be used to exalt everyone and to lift everyone up. So keep this in mind, rather than using your ideas and words to cut and to harm, use them to uplift. But then Mercury goes into Virgo at the end of August where it's exalted, so that'll be really good. August 26th, Mercury goes into Virgo where our mind becomes very precise and we organize all those details strategically and correctly so we organize our kingdom in a way that's not damaging and that's not debilitating and that's not sort of cutting, right? It's uplifting and inspiring. So again, Mercury in Virgo at the end of the month will return a lot of common sense and practical use to Mercury's nature. So then we talk about Venus. Venus starts in Leo and it's in Leo until the 10th. And again, Mars is pretty far away, but Mars is still in Leo as well. So, but Venus, you know, having separated from Mars um, is still far enough away to where it's not as explosive, but it's still in the same sign. So Venus and Leo, we start our relationships and our associations with others can be, you know, still kind of fired up um, at the beginning of August. But then in the, um, after the 10th, Venus goes into Virgo. It's actually the sign of debilitation. Actually, it's on the 11th. When Venus is in Virgo, we can tend to be kind of fussy about what makes us happy and have a hard time just finding beauty in everything and finding happiness in everything, right? Venus exalted in Pisces means where we can find happiness in anything. When Venus is in Virgo, we can find fault with everything. So we need to be careful of that. Um, notice that tendency. Um, so honestly, Venus... In, in August is not so powerful. In Leo, again, it can be kind of fired up like a sort of demanding queen, like demanding we praise her. And then in Virgo, feeling sort of dissatisfied because none of that praise was good enough anyway. So again, the enlightened perspective here would be that when Venus is in Leo until the 10th or until the 11th, it's great to really share joy and affection. Again, Leo is about sharing. So Think less about the respect and appreciation you're receiving and think more about giving. Give the thing you think you're not getting, right? That's Venus in Leo until the 11th. And then Venus in Virgo is, instead of finding fault with everything, you know, again, organize and stand for and serve beauty and, you know, those who are disrespected in the world. So Venus in Virgo is great for service um, and, you know, what's called you know, bhakti yoga and service and karma yoga, um, those are powerful um, ways of framing that. So again, I hope you like this video. Like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, and get updates. Thanks a lot.